are back with stage three, day five of the superhero plan. Today, we're gonna be hitting legs for the second time this week, so prepare yourselves. With today's workout, you may notice that the sets are just a little bit lower than the first leg workout we did earlier in the week. We're just gonna be doing three sets, and there's a good reason for that, because your legs, in addition to the rest of your body, have been under quite a bit of workload this week, so we're easing it down just a little bit. And in addition to the sets being a little lower, I myself am taking the weight a little lighter because I wanna get this leg workout in, but I wanna do it safely. I wanna have that full range of motion, and they're a little sore from all the stress we put them under earlier, so I'm getting the workout in, but I'm doing it a little less strenuous than I was on the first leg workout, but it still feels pretty damn good. So we got the first exercise and it's gonna be the front squats. Now this is one of the only exercises that has the pyramiding scheme today. So you're gonna start with a little bit of lighter weight, do the 12 repetitions, and you're gonna pyramid up in weight as the repetitions decrease. So you're going a little bit heavier with it, but not crazy, because front squats can be a little awkward at times. And to get the proper position, you gotta remember a few things. One, the bar needs to be right at the clavicle here. So an easy way to just kind of walk up and if it's right at the bottom of the neck, the clavicle, that's perfect. Now there's two ways to hold the bar. You need to do the cross section like here. If you don't really have a lot of wrist mobility, it's easy to hold the bar this way and you pretty much just go from there. Or if you wanna do a clean position, um, you're going to walk up the bar in here, kinda of with your fingertips. And that sometimes nice is because your actual hands are pushing it against the bottom neck area, that clavicle portion, and kind of hold the bar in that position a little easier. So sometimes this can be a little bit more beneficial, but again, you're gonna need a little bit more wrist mobility there. So you might have to stress th stretch the wrists out a little bit if you're gonna be doing this position. But once you do have this position down, you're gonna keep your elbows up, just like so, chest up. You want a pretty wide stance um, because what's gonna be happening is instead of like a typical squat where you push your hips back, like you're sitting in a small chair, you're almost just squatting between your legs, just like so, and then pushing it back to the top position there. So that way, it's gonna help you keep more of that vertical torso, because of course, if the torso starts to kind of drop down, the chest starts to meet or point towards the floor, of course, the, balls, the bar is gonna wanna roll off you. So to keep that vertical torso, the chest up, is gonna make you into that better position there. And some people will even put uh, some plates under their heels there. Sometimes that can help a little bit if you're a little immobile or unflexible there in certain areas. So front squats, definitely gonna be help targeting the quads quite a bit. Of course, your glutes are involved, your core is involved, even a little bit in your upper body because you're holding the bar. So an awesome exercise can feel a little awkward, but just remember those few things when you're doing the front squats, bar placement, elbows high, squat between your legs, you should be good to go. We couldn't forget the supersets, and today is no different. We're gonna be supersetting the hex bar deadlifts with the farmer's walk. Now, with the farmer's walk, you're gonna notice we don't have a lot of space in our gym at the moment. We're doing a little rearranging. Typically, we would have the larger door open so we could just walk straight outside. So we are DIYing it a little bit. We're just making little tiny laps back and forth. This is not only hard, but your grip strength is gonna be feeling it big time. So if you have the full 20 yards to walk, then by all means, feel free. But if you gotta do what we gotta do, hey, you gotta make it work, but you still get it in, which is what we're all about. Now, if you don't have a hex bar, because not everyone does, you can always just use dumbbells and do the same exercise pretty much. It'll be more of like a farmer squat rather than a hex bar deadlift, but it does work very uh, closely with the same kind of movements and muscles involved there. But the hex bar deadlift's pretty simple. You start it from a dead position, hence the name. Uh, so the beginning position is gonna be on the floor. But this one's gonna be a little bit different than a typical conventional deadlift where the bar is gonna be placed in front of you. Now your grip is more at your sides in a neutral position. Your torso is gonna be a little bit more vertical and you're gonna be pushing a little bit more with the legs and kind of less of the pull in the back there. So you're gonna feel a lot in those quads too, not only just the hamstrings and the kind of more posterior chain there. So excellent movement, a lot of leg. Of course, a little bit of the upper body too, but then of course when it's supersetted with the farmer walks, you get a lot of, you know, kind of that trap area in those grip, like Hudson was saying, this grip, again, I want to give out pretty quickly, but you know, of course, that's why we're pairing these two up together, not only the legs, a little bit in the upper body, the grip too, you know, it all kind of like plays together in movements like this, which is very nice. So awesome pairing here. 
definitely very exhausting and has a lot of benefits. Moving on to Bulgarian split squat supersetted with single leg Romanian deadlifts. If I had two exercises to choose which may be my least favorite of all time, these would probably be pretty near the top of the list. But why are we including it in the plan? Well, just because you're not the biggest fan of something doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And in my case, that applies very strongly. I had a major ankle injury and some of the exercises that my physical therapist really recommended me doing was, you guessed it, Bulgarian split squats and Romanian deadlifts. So. The leg is much more than just the quad and hamstrings and calves. They're the most visual, they're what looks good, but of course your ankle does a lot of the stabilization. There's a lot of mobility in there. So you can't forget everything your body does because it's an amazing machine and you wanna make sure everything's running properly. And for me, including these exercises in our routine really helps with that. It makes sure that I'm walking, running, able to perform other exercises such as squats correctly. And it's been very beneficial. So it may not be my favorite exercises to perform, but they really help me out big time. We are moving on to the standing calf raises. You can't forget the calves. They're not one of the most visual body parts. You don't see them a lot of the times, but you really want to make sure that they stay aesthetic and they stay symmetrical with the rest of your body. So earlier in the week, we did it seated. Today, we're doing it standing. And just that little variation really feels nice for us. It's a little change of pace. And as you may notice, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm putting some weight plates underneath my feet. It gives me a little bit farther range of motion. That way, you're able to have the plantar and the dorsiflexion, and it's beneficial. It's an easy little addition, and it works really great. Final exercise of the day, and that's gonna be weighted planks. This one can be a little hard to uh, just get in the exercise position as you may be seeing me doing right now, but with a little bit of practice, you're gonna be able to do it just fine. And that little weight feels like a little bit more than just a little weight because when those 60 seconds are ticking away, you're going to be feeling it big time. You keep that core tight, you keep the glutes tight, you keep, you keep everything tight because it really helps to engage your body and I recommend playing a pretty kick-ass montage because you're gonna need it. Those 60 seconds feel like they take quite a while, but after three sets of this thing, you are gonna be finished with this workout and ready for some nice recovery. You earned it. That wraps up day five, stage three of the superhero plan. We only have one more day left and that's gonna be chest and back again. Oh yeah. Hope you are all well, hope you're all safe. It's a little strange. I mean, I know we're lucky we got this home gym here, but it is a little weird being as isolated as we are, and I'm sure no doubt you are as well, but just stay strong, stay consistent, and we'll see you next time for another superhero workout. Yeah, stay buff.